we're very much welcome here. If you're visiting today, if this is your first time, welcome. We're glad that you're here. This is the day the Lord has made, and I am very happy to rejoice in it. So, again, welcome. Our next song is I'll Praise My Maker. It's hymn number 166. a good morning. This is Harvest Sunday, time when we just specially give thanks to the Lord for what he is doing amongst us. The Apostle John pulls back the veil and gives us a glimpse into heaven, and these are the words that we hear him say, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, and this morning we have an opportunity to join with that great multitude in doing the same this morning as we worship. As Ira has already welcomed you, if, if you're here for the first time, we especially want to extend a warm welcome to you. We have a harvest meal afterwards, and we invite you to stay for that as well, and invite you back whenever you can. A part of our worship is to spend time in prayer, bringing our request to him. And so if there's needs that you have, it may be spiritual, it may be uh, physical, emotional, whatever, we like to pray for those individuals who make that known as they stand. And before uh, we do that, I just want to mention to you a number of individuals that we do need to keep in prayer. Uh, Doris Hall at the passing of her husband, Herman. Also, Lois Holstetler is in the hospital at Goshen, so let's remember her, and Laverne, Laverne Yoder uh, sustained an accident and broke his ankle in a few places last evening, so uh, let's remember him as well. And others who are uh, recovering from surgery, uh, Del Slayball, Steve Schrock, and Mo Miller. So at this time, if you would like to have prayer, just we invite you to stand and we'll pray together. Are there any? God and our Father, we thank you. You know all about us. You know the needs we have and the challenges that we face. 
Lord, I pray that you would be with each one this morning that is standing. You know the needs before we ever express them or make them known. And so in that same way, we pray that your sovereign care, they would experience, your touch, they would experience as well. We, we're glad, God, that you're very mindful of who we are. This morning, we do pray for Lois and Laverne and Doris and Dell and Steve and Mo. You know exactly where they are. And I thank you, God, that you are a healing God. And you do, do, you do far beyond what we can ask or imagine. And so we pray this for your name and in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Just a number of announcements that I wanted to make uh, this morning. To remind you of the congregational meeting this evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, where there'll be decision made and voting on the 2019 spending plan. Also, as you may be aware, there's a sign up for baking cookies for the Gospel Echoes uh, Prison Ministry. Also, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, boxes are available in the Information Center, and uh, so you can pick them up, and uh, they'll be picked up this week as well. Um, also Wednesday night, Lowell Troyer will be sharing his faith story. So we invite you to come to that. And then next Saturday, uh, Bible Memory has their 5K run at the Oxbow Park. So you may want to participate in that. You can run or walk either way. So uh, just be aware of these events. Okay. It is our privilege at times to have uh, missionaries home from the field, and for the last several months, John and Linus Goodson have been home from uh, where they have been serving uh, with YWAM in uh, Hilo, Hawaii. And so this time I want to invite John and Linus up. There they are over here, hiding from me for a little bit of a moment mission, a little bit of catch up to what you guys are doing now, so... This is Alinus's favorite time of the year, winter in Indiana. So, <laughs> so John and Alinus, could you share just a little bit about, kind of give us an update about what you are doing and sort of some of the ways that you've been seeing God at work and what you guys have been doing? That is a really, that is a really uh, full question. <laughs> um, really condensed version is we, um, Pioneers School that most of you guys know, a lot of you guys know about, uh, with the University of the Nations YWAM out in Hawaii, uh, where we run a, a school, a second level school at the University of the Nations. So pe it's a core course. So if they want to get an education with the university there, they uh, a degree with it, they can come and take our course, and that goes into the degree. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, a communication degree with the university. So uh, yeah, and on the other side of that, right now we are working with our ministry called AIM Justice, Advocacy International Ministries of Justice, um, that we are gonna work around the mainland with connecting, we wanna, so where the University of the Nations and stuff, everyone that goes to that has to do a DTS, a Discipleship Training School. So it's a six month thing where you put time aside, a number of us from here have gone and done that, um, but not everybody can do that. Not everybody can take six months out of their time and go and do missions and go do that stuff, so we wanna be able to come and connect with churches, communities, peoples, and be able to talk. What is like different things when it comes to missions? What is advocacy? How do we engage in these areas? And that is our heart. Um, that's the really quick version. If you guys want to know more, come ask questions. <laughs> so I know you guys were at our ministry fair and shared a little bit about what you're yeah. doing with video advocacy and, and dealing specifically with uh, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are some of the exciting things in, in terms of specific ways you've seen God at work and what you've been doing, or, or as you've shown maybe the documentary, they made a 20-minute documentary just kind of helping to expose some of the darkness with human trafficking. What are some of the different challenges or maybe the different ways that you've seen God at work and what you've been doing? Absolutely. Now, those of you guys have taken speech classes, they tell you never to read, 
everything. But because I ramble, I have written it down. So here we go. Um, through our students' desires, passions, and skill development, through the connections that we have come into with contact with, through the opportunities we share, the documentary, but more important, the calling God has placed on our lives, is, which is to restore identity. Personally, we have witnessed God guiding us as a ministry as we look for ways to empower his people and personally as we, as we see God work as he leads us into a deeper relationship understood with one another and himself. That's like, I'm just trying to bullet point this. So I don't, <laughs> like, literally those that you know me, like I get passionate and I start talking, so. Uh, what is maybe one of the, a couple of the key ways, I know that we have your beautiful faces up there. Oh yeah. Or at least hers. And uh, what are the ways that maybe a, a very, a one or two specific ways that we can be praying for you both and for your ministry? Absolutely. Uh, so some of those ways are in the back of your bulletin. Um, as we have, we have um, for just wisdom and guidance. Um, <clears throat> as we learn to walk as a couple in ministry, it is not an easy thing. Uh, ministry and missionary work is not easy, and to work in the areas that we work, they're not light areas. So just prayer and guidance is that as we do that. Um, seeking balance between work, missions, ministry, and rest is huge because a lot of things you take home with you, and we have to figure that out. And seeking financial strategy for long-term mission and, and good health insurance. Health insurance is really difficult for missionaries, and... Um, and in general, and foreigners like Alina's here, it's been really, really difficult trying to figure that out. And, yeah, and we just want to say that even though we have prayer requests, we do want to honor people that have thanked us or that have helped us, like Angela and Joel uh, Miller. They have opened their, I don't know where they're at here, but they have opened their, their place up for us and they, um, their, the little apartment they have out there, and it's been a huge, huge blessing. Every few days we look at each other and we go, we are so blessed. So we just want to honor you guys. You guys have been a huge, huge blessing to us. So thank All right, you. this time I just want to pray over you guys. And if you uh, feel comfortable, to kind of extend your hands as we pray over John and Alinas. Father God, I do lift up uh, John and Alinas to you. Uh, I just pray that you would strengthen them as a couple. As they go through just the trials of, of being somewhat newly married and, and trying to figure out uh, mission work in the midst of it, I pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance. Father, they are working in some areas that are full of a lot of darkness. And it's hard to, to leave that sort of at work. And I just pray that you would continue to speak light into their lives, speak hope into the midst of this dark topic. And Father, as they uh, share this video, as they try to get word out and, and bring awareness to the issue of human trafficking, I pray that uh, this dreadful thing would become a thing of the past, that they would help to restore the dignity of all people that are made in your image. And we ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, this week will be a special time of collecting the uh, Christmas boxes for the Christmas Operation Child. And uh, this morning, there are children that will be coming along with the offering and dedicating the, some of these boxes. So we invite them and the uh, ushers to come forward for this morning's offering. Okay, let us pray. God, this Father, we, we come this morning bringing offerings. And this morning, a significant part of our offerings are these boxes for the Christmas Operation child, Children. And we pray that as each one of these boxes go to each child, that they would also receive the good news of who you are and be blessed by them. So we dedicate uh, these boxes for your ministry. And now the offerings that we give today, out of the abundance that you've given us in this time of harvest, we thank you for your bounty, not only financially and materially, but spiritually. And so we pray that these offerings are all used to extend your kingdom across the street 
and across the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Thank you, Jody, for sharing your gift with us today. As we continue in our time of giving praise to God, let's stand and we'll be singing hymn number 344, I Will Sing of My Redeemer.
I want to ask you a question this morning. Uh, just keep to yourself right now. It'll be rhetorical for right now, which means don't shout it out, but I hope you all are able to answer the question in some way, and, and that's this question. What are you thankful for? What do you show gratitude for in your life right now? I mean, in reality, the answer should be more than we can think of because we have so many things to be grateful for. We have so many things to give thanks for. A lot of times, the things in our lives that we have to give thanks for, we don't even recognize how thankful we are for them until they're gone. When it's not there. And we remember how thankful we are for it. We all have so many things to be thankful for. If you can see me right now, are you thankful for your eyesight? If you can hear me, are you, are you thankful for the ability to hear? Many of you, as you're able to have some form of mobility to even gather this morning, we have so much to be thankful for, family, friends, God. In fact, the Bible, the word that they used for thankfulness is Eucharistia. Which literally means, if you, if you take the word apart, good grace. How many of us can say in our lives, we have so many little aspects of good grace. Gifts from God in our lives that we can be thankful for. As I was, I was thinking about thankful this morning, one of the stories that, that came to my mind was the story of the ten lepers. Now, uh, Luke, who is an early follower of Jesus, tells this story in, in the book that he writes in, in the New Testament, and he's recalling uh, some of the stories that he's heard about Jesus and his disciples as they're on their way to Jerusalem. And, and as he and the disciples are going to Jerusalem, they, they come upon uh, these lepers, and a leper, it's a skin disease. And that culture would have been contagious, and so these people were ostracized. These people were essentially kicked out of the community, and, and when enter, uh, anyone got close to them, they would have to shout out, unclean, 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 so no one would be around them. They were without physical contact. They were away from the community. They couldn't gather with the rest of uh, the Jewish believers in the temple to worship. Incredible amount of loneliness. And as they see Jesus coming, they cry out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus comes over to them and says, okay, go present yourself to the high priests. It's an act of faith. They're going to enter into the temple area. And then they all get up, all ten get up and leave and go. And Luke says that they are healed as they're going. Here are 10 people who have something to be thankful for. And Luke tells us that one of them comes back and gives thanks to Jesus. One of them gives thanks of the 10. In our lives, we have so much to be thankful for. So much to be, uh, have gratitude for. The question becomes, how do we live in a state where, where our attitude is constantly one of gratitude? How do we live in a state of, of constant thanksgiving for all the blessings that we have? How do we, are, are we more like that one who comes back than the nine who never give thanks? I think throughout Scripture, one of the things that we see over and over again is the emphasis on remember. Remember. For this one leper, as he was on the way, and I don't know, the Scripture doesn't say how far they were from Jesus, but at some point he remembers his previous state. He knows who he is now as one who has been healed, and he remembers something else, the source. He remembers the source of that little aspect of grace that he has the ability to give thanks to God for. He remembers the source, and he goes back to Jesus and gives thanks. How easily do we forget 
all that we have to be thankful for. How short is our memory spans? In the Old Testament, as as God is, is preparing to lead Israel out of Egypt, out of hundreds of years of slavery, he begins to impress upon them the need to remember. We can see one of these aspects of remembering it in the book of Exodus. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. He's getting ready to save them, getting ready to bring them out of Egypt, to make them a people when they were not. Exodus chapter 12, and we'll be starting in verse 14 and be going to verse 20. Exodus chapter 12, Exodus the very beginning, second book of the Bible. God is speaking, it says, this is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly. So there's that aspect of everybody gets together to remember. There's a communal gathering. And uh, excuse me, on, on the first day, hold a sacred assembly, and another one on the seventh day. Do no work at all on these days except to prepare food for everyone to eat. This is all that you may do. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread, because it was on this day I brought your dis- divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. In the first month, you were to eat bread made without yeast from the evening to the Uh, 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your homes. And anyone, whether foreigner or native born, who eats anything with yeast in it must be cut off from the community. Eat nothing made without yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. We see that this day, this Passover, is passed on from generation to generation. Jews today still celebrate this feast. Why? As a lasting act of communal memory for what God had done to save them. Commemorate it year after year. Gather as the body year after year. In fact, God tells them, eat these bitter herbs during this week. Why? To remember the bitterness of slavery. Eat the Passover lamb. Why? To remember God's act of salvation. Eat no uh, bread with yeast in it. Why? To remember that you are to be pure. The association with, with yeast and sin. Remember who you are to be. Over and over again, God oppresses upon them the need to remember. And yet we also see how easy even Israel forgets what God has done. They forget the source of all these blessings. If you read the rest of the book of Exodus and, and even some of the, the future books, we see how easily they forget and so they start pining for the days of slavery. In fact, uh, so quick are they to complain to God, to lose their gratitude, that rabbis uh, tell the story of, of uh, the Israelites passing through the Red Sea and, and then the waves are, are up on either side so they can pass safely through to dry land to escape Pharaoh's army. And as they're passing through, They're complaining about the mud that's getting on their shoes. Not realizing that it is God who is saving them from death. So their attitude at times could be one of ingratitude, of a lack of thankfulness, of missing the source of every blessing in their lives. The giver of every good gift. They were to remember and gather to remember. Over and over again, we see that this is just one of the feasts that Israel celebrates. 
Over and over again, we see them gathering for different kinds of feasts, all whose source is God as the giver of good gifts and the ways that God has worked in their communal lives. And so they would get together with, bear with me now, dancing and singing and, of course, my favorite, food. These are all acts of rejoicing over what God had done. It was a celebration, a party, a time to remember and to celebrate and to lift God up, to remember the source. Do we have times in our own lives where we gather to rejoice? As we enter into this season of sort of the end of the year, we have several all back and back to back to back, right? We have Thanksgiving. Will anyone be gathering with friends and family to celebrate, to eat together? to rejoice over all that you have been thankful for. As a church, we have these holy days, these times of communal celebration, right? We have Christmas, which remembers God coming down to earth as a child. And and the church gathers to rejoice and to celebrate the coming of Christ. We have a communal time of celebration on Easter. Why? Because it is Jesus rising from the dead, conquering death, so that we too might have life. This, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, is times for celebration and rejoicing. Because Christ lives, we too shall live. And so at Easter and Christmas, we remember and we celebrate and and we celebrate Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit comes down and, and dwells in believers as a time of celebration. That, that, that the Holy Spirit lives in us and empowers us to serve Him, to, to, to live like Jesus, to be like Jesus. Today is a time that we have gathered to remember and to celebrate. And next Sunday will be a day that we have gathered and to remember and to celebrate. Why? Because Sunday is a special day. Sunday, according to the early church, is not just any other day of the week. Sunday is a mini-Easter You see, the early believers, the very earliest ones, as they were Jewish believers, they gathered on Sunday, but within the the first couple years, they began to gather on Sunday as well, the Lord's Day, because that day was special. It was on this day that Christ rose from the dead, and they wanted to remember that. And slowly over time, the main day of gathering for God's people began to be Sunday, because Sunday was a memorial day to what Christ had done, the ways that in which God Christ has died for us to save us from sin and slavery and death. Today, my fellow brothers and sisters, is a mini Easter. It is a time of celebration to dance and to sing and to celebrate all that God has done, to remember the source and rejoice over his good graces for us. To remember to celebrate, to rejoice. So I ask again, brothers and sisters, what are you thankful for? Yes, we remember the source, but is, we, we, we're thankful for all that Christ has done in your own life. What are you thankful for? Now, I'm gonna, I want to do something that I don't think we've ever done it here before. So I want you, now some of you may not have social media and that's fine. What I want you to do is I want you to pull out your phones. This is pastor giving you permission. Some of you have already done this, I know. It's all right, pull them out. I'm looking at you up in the balcony. John Good, I'm looking at you. I know you already had it out. Okay, if you have Facebook, you have social media, Twitter, whatever that would be. Thanks for that text, Andy. I want, I want you to, to start off this way. I want you to post something that you're thankful for. So, uh, it, Jason, put that slide up. It can start off this way. This is just a guide. 
I'm thankful for, and then put a hashtag, that's a little pound sign for uh, some of us who are older, give thanks. Do that right now. What are you thankful for? Do it right now. Take two seconds. Here's what I'm thankful for. I'm going to continue preaching while you post. Do it right now. It's fine. You have permission. Tim Stolzus, I see you at work out there. I... Here's what I'm thankful for. Today's a special day for me. I went back and looked, and it just happens to coincide with today. Today is the 100th sermon that I've given here. And so I want to thank you all for the ways these last five years that you have encouraged me. You've encouraged me to use gifts. You, you've in, encouraged me and, and talked about how much maybe a word from God meant to you. And so I just want to say thank you to you. You have been an act of grace that God has given me these last 100 sermons. So thank you, and I appreciate it. We have been blessed in so many ways. And one of the ways as God's people that we give thanks to God is to use these acts of grace, to enjoy these acts of grace, to use these gifts and these blessings. One of the ways that, that we as a community are doing that this morning is by taking up an offering. Some of you have already given uh, food to be given in these angel tree boxes to bless other people. Another way that this will happen is that we're going to take up an offering in just a few minutes to be used for some of the various food banks in our community, a way to say, God has given me so many good gifts, and now I want to spread the love. I want to share these graces with those around me. And so uh, some of the kids, uh, they are going to take up an offering, and we see them scattering right now to go do that, and and I want to invite the worship team to come forward as well. But see, your, your acts of thankfulness don't have to end this morning. It's not just write a check, but as you go throughout this week, may you remember the source of every good gift in your life. May these be times of celebration and rejoicing, and if you want, you can even do a little dancing as acts of celebration for the good graces that God has given to us. So at this time, I want to invite the ushers to come forward. These are some handsome, handsome young kids. And as God's people, let us give thanks through prayer. Father, we are the recipients of so many good graces, so many blessings that you have showered upon us. Father, may you help us to remember the source of every good gift is you. Help us to have these moments in our lives where we can rejoice in various ways, and one of them is to seek to rejoice through blessing others. So, Father, may you take this offering and use it for your kingdom and for your glory. Amen.